Japan. It's one of the most unique and homogenous countries in the entire world. Its contrast with Western culture and lifestyle has intrigued outsiders for centuries. About as close as you get without getting your feet wet. I'm going to be fulfilling a lifelong desire and travel there for the very first time. I have less than three weeks to traverse the island nation and soak in the architecture and history. And the moats. We love our moats. Transportation. My feet were killing me. Walked like 14 miles a day. Scenery. And of course, the food. Basically like two squid tentacles. Got some assorted beef tongue. So we're gonna have an authentic Japanese meal. We're actually inside someone's house. And if I'm lucky, but these games sell out quick. We got tickets at the last second. I may be able to beat the sellout crowds and catch a Japanese baseball game. <sighs> Lugi and I just arrived in at the monorail station right now. Don't know what station we're headed towards or anything, but man, we are wiped. We got no sleep on there. I feel like a newspaper that's been left on a park bench for like a couple days and got all soggy. I feel like paper mache slop. Some makeshift craft by a little kid. We really wanted to fully immerse ourselves in the Japanese culture as soon as we got here, so we decided to book at the Best Western. <laughs> so we're looking forward to that. Uh, we wanted to go to the Robot Hotel. Well, things fell through. Maybe we'll see some robots in the future, but we're going to the Best Western. Uh, we're almost there. We're excited. We're ready to shower, rally, go get some sweets, get some Hitachino beer. Oh, we're ready. We're ready. We got two hours of sleep, but we're ready to rally. We're ready to rally. We're going out for some food in this big market. We don't know where we're going. We're just going to eyeball things, see what looks good, get something, hopefully not get food poisoning, and uh, let's roll with it. It's pretty cool looking though. Walking around Ueno at nighttime, we came across the legendary Benendo Castle, not to be Benendo. Runs with the Nintendo, not to be confused with the Nintendo Castle owned by Waluigi. Ohio gozaimasu. Good morning, everyone. Day two in Tokyo. It's rainy as hell, but still, still kind of beautiful despite all the rain. Very peaceful. It's only about 6.30 a.m. As you can imagine, we didn't sleep that well and uh, woke up nice and early. So now we're going to take a stroll through Ueno Park. Beautiful park. I actually came here last night, but it was so dark. It wasn't illuminated. Now we see all the pretty plants. Very quaint. Got this random shrine in the middle of the park. Kind of cool. Can't read a single sign, so hopefully it's open. If not, well, I'm not the hard way. We say sumimasen, which means excuse me. We, we move onward. Or go menasai, which means like, sorry. Oh, this is kind of cool. This is not a shrine after just a bunch of thingy-majigglers, as they're formerly known in Japan. I had to move out of the way briefly because someone was praying, but it's a pretty intense shrine. Uh, apparently, once you finish praying, you clap twice loudly. Yeah, I don't want to disturb anyone. I'll be respectful, but it's something you can't really miss out on. It's too nice. So here we are at Shinobazu Pond. It was not a lake. It was way off. It is way too small to be a lake, but it's still very cool. A little dragon shrine. We don't really know what to do. They got two scoops right there. You scoop the water and who knows, but we're just checking out Nintendo Shrine around our favorite lake. Still peaceful as ever. Bonsai trees. So I don't even know what type of tree. I'm not going to pretend I know. Good old Nintendo in the rain. Now off to the museum. Currently checking out Yanaka. Nice and serene, not a soul in sight. Just us and some peaceful, beautiful cemeteries. We're at the Inari Shrine, the god, god of rice with fox messengers. Honestly, the shrine is literally next to someone's apartment, so it feels a little suspect, but hey, there's shrines everywhere. So I will say, my first impression about Tokyo was that it's gonna be crowded, people are gonna be tripping over each other, it's gonna be chaos. But really, Tokyo is pretty dang quaint in a lot of areas. A lot of green space, a lot of peace. It's really enjoyable, even in the rain, just, 
Uh, I could see myself living here, but my God, it's so peaceful. And there's no one around. No one's jumping over each other. Just you and nature. Just arrived in Kyoto. Second hotel, slightly larger. Much nicer, actually. Do we got a view this time? Dun dun dun. Sort of. Just arrived in Arashiyama. Day three in Japan. We're trying to go to this temple, Tenryu Temple. Then we're gonna check out the monkey park. And then maybe the bamboo forest, but from what I hear, it's extremely overcrowded. So we'll see what we can do about that. But my God, you have to come here pretty early apparently because it gets super crowded, but it's nice and quiet right now. Just absorbing in all the natural beauty. It's kind of insane how peaceful it is. You think Japan would be an overcrowded country. So many people, huge cities, but no. Quiet everywhere you look. Everything's put together. Logan and I are now gonna check out the monkey sanctuary. As you can see, you got a little monkey signs. To be nearby, has a little bit of a hike. So, I wanna check out the monkeys and all, but if you look at the Google reviews of the place, people are sounding off about this monkey sanctuary. So yeah, they're diseased, depressed, mean monkeys. Logan, you excited to see those monkeys? Oh yeah. Yeah, let's see if they're diseased or not, folks. A lot of stairs to see these monkeys. We're off to see the monkeys, the diseased monkeys of Oz. But here, we have the big hike to see the diseased monkeys. We made it to the top. Monkey Mountain. Well, monkeys are waiting for us at the top. I could hear them screaming. I said, don't look at the monkeys in the eyes. So I got the sunglasses. Strategic. Don't want them to rip my eyeballs out. Oh shit, they're wild. They're right there. I feel like if I didn't have sunglasses, they would have clawed my eyes out by now. Hey, there, buddy. You don't look so diseased. The answer's out. These monkeys, mildly diseased at most. Maybe they have monkey pox, a slight flu. They don't have mange or anything. They're healthy monkeys. Google reviews was wrong. Now we're on our way to the Tenryu temple. Things are starting to crowd up a bit. It's getting warmer out. It's about 9.30 a.m. now. People are out and about. We saw our monkeys, we got our fix. Apparently this Tenryu temple's got a really pretty garden. Pretty interested in that, just seeing the, the greenery. But apparently a complex. I thought it was a standalone temple. It's a whole complex. So you get to walk around. Look at all the mini shrines. I don't know if that's someone's house or whatever it is, it's pretty. A little nervous to walk farther, so let's uh, go on the main path. We're in the Tenryu Garden. Oh, we got a pond. We love ponds. So apparently this is a World Heritage Site. The garden was designed in the 14th century. And the temple burned down eight times. Most recently reconstructed in 1864. So we made it to the Sakatorimoto. Preserved street, apparently replicated from the 19th century or so the 1800s. Got the thatched roofs. Pretty quiet. I don't know if anyone actually lives around here. And just, I think it's mostly just tourist attractions these days, which is fine. I can see why people are fascinated with Japanese culture. They really know how to do architecture and gardens, specifically gardens. Really impressive. Best gardens I've ever seen. The bamboo forest. Honestly, not as crowded as I was expecting, but still a lot of people. Can't really feel the nature. A little off the beaten path away from the other tourists. Take any breaks we can get from the wild crowds. So we're gonna have an authentic Japanese meal. We're actually inside someone's house off the road in uh, Kyoto. Uh, they basically just had a menu at the end of their driveway. We pointed at it. They don't speak a lick of English, um, but the pictures told the story and we're gonna get what we get, but we're excited. So we made it to Nara. We have a lot of beer. What up? A lot of people seem really enthralled by the deer. Personally, East Coast US, see deer all the time, so it's not as magical, but I mean, it's pretty friendly, I guess. 
Whoa, just licked my hand. I guess I gotta wash that. These deer are feisty. So anyway, let's head to the gardens. I hear a lot of good things about this garden. Apparently it's better than the deer park itself. Oh yeah, I can see it already. Beats the deer in my opinion. No, no, no competition. Got your garden, got your peaceful house. What more do you need? You can't be upset looking at all of this stuff. You just have to admire life at this point. It's just incredible. I'm a little lost for words. And it just continues and continues. Man, that is awesome. I love it with technology like that. Water wheel. That garden though, my son Logan. I pay a thousand bucks a night to stay in that garden for a weekend. No tourists allowed. That was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my entire life. We are in the legitimate Todaiji Castle Palace. I don't know what it is, but it's got a beautiful courtyard. <laughs> Imagine living in this place. Man, it's like a soccer field. Imagine living in this 8th century or however long. Top of the line samurai security. You got your incense going. You got a big gate. What more do you need? No Wi-Fi, but other than that, it's living pretty nice. But from what I hear, the biggest golden Buddha on this side of the basin is around here, so that's the main attraction, this golden Buddha on the inside. Let's see how big this Buddha is. They didn't want me photographing the other Buddha. This one right here, it's massive. I don't know if it's golden, if it used to be golden, but it's something to behold. Welcome to the Katsuka Taishi Shrine. And you know what makes the shrine special? It's the 5,000th shrine I've seen in three days. The shrine fatigue is real. <laughs> I haven't even shown one-tenth of the shrines that I've actually visited, but it is pretty awesome. Katsuga Taishi Shrine. Oh, it's beautiful. Love the purple and pink. Imagine these lanterns illuminated at nighttime. How magical that is. Just walking along this illuminated path. That's gonna be so intense. All right, I think it's time to pray to the deer gods. Honestly, they did those monkeys wrong. If there's anything that's diseased, it's the deer, not the monkeys. So, the monkeys is all a scapegoat for the diseased deer of Nera but it has been breathtaking, oh my god. It doesn't get old. I say I got shrine fatigue. Five minutes later, I'm ready for the next shrine. I'm not done. It's shrine time. It's the first absolutely deserted shrine we've been to. Peace. Oh. So we're on a walk to Fushiri Inari Temple. It's like a three hour uh, hike. Already got like 45 minutes down. Uh, you can see in the thick of it, a lot of these little shrine things. Thing is, you got every time you walk through them, you have to have a little bow and walk with your outside foot. So if you're walking on the left side of the gravel, you have to walk with your left foot first and give a little bow. For tall people like me, sometimes you got to bow anyway, so it's instinctual, but it's pretty cool. Just walk through it like so. I'm not gonna bow 50 times, but you get the idea. And apparently, a lot of these writings on here are actually advertisements from like cleaning companies and the like. It's not all actually religious. So, as I was saying, 
there's a com combination of religion and commercialism everywhere in Japan. It's kind of crazy. Another thing, Shintoism and Buddhism are actually combined. A lot of people are both Shinto and Buddhist. Uh, so people go to shrines, people go to the temples. It's kind of religion of convenience. For funerals, you typically go to a Buddhist temple because of, they believe in reincarnation. Whereas for Shinto people, it's usually for birth. You go to a Shinto uh, temple, sorry, Buddhist shrine, Shinto temple. And some people even have Christianity here and you go to a chapel and you have a Christian wedding. So it's kind of interesting, the combination of all three. So in the Shinto shrines, foxes are guardians because they guard the rice fields. And the horses you pray to for rain. I'm curious what the tanuki is all about. I need to figure out that, but as you can see, tons and tons of little shrines. These are not graves, these are shrines. And you see the red bibs. Red is protection. So red is very sacred. As you can see some cranes over here. People even give some prayers to the horse. If you want to pray, the Shinto shrine, first you gotta wash your hands. Left hand first, right hand using the ladle. You wash the handle, and then uh, you're able to go to Shinto Shrine. And look at that fox. Check out the skyline of Kyoto. You can even see the cha train station in the distance. It's one third of the entire city. We're at the bottom of the Fushimi and Nari Shrine. Apparently, there used to just be the ones at the top of the mountain, but people were fat, people were old, so they made a shrine down here so you can pray. Super touristy down here. Not everyone strong enough to get to the top of the mountain. Up to the top of the mountain, maybe 10% make it. It was really serene at the top. Not great views, to be honest. There's not many views other than the one I showed. It was like halfway up. You got the three temples of transportation, dancing, luck. About the kitsune, the foxes that are the guardians and messengers, tanukis. Tanukis are also little tricksters, but also good for prosperity. Little raccoon dogs, I didn't even know they existed till now. But now we're just heading to the metro to go to a castle and uh, they have a concert at the metro. It's, it looks pretty lit. Let's take a look. So we're in Kyoto Rail Station. Uh, they didn't allow us to film, but the dude actually pointed to us He's like, very good, and we clapped at it. We got a shout out from the star. So uh, just wanted to throw that out there. This is awesome. I'm having a great day today. This is one of my favorite days in uh, Japan, in Kyoto for sure. Just stumbled upon a random shrine off the main road. Literally a highway 10 feet away. Out there, highway. And now you're in a nice, beautiful garden. It's so crazy. It's a juxtaposition. You go from a busy street Dead silent. Oh shit. Is that a fish? Is that a carp? Time to feed the carp. Entering Nijoji Castle. It's actually just minutes away from our hotel. I finally decided to come see it. It's actually closing at 4. We're here, it's like 3.50, so we're kind of rushed a little bit. But this castle is pretty cool because it's got its own moat around it. Two moats, actually crazy this is there's an inner moat and an outer moat we just crossed the outer moat to get into here so we just got outside the temple that was awesome going through the rooms uh the squeaky floorboards apparently they're called nightingale floors because they sound like birds when you're walking around it was restored in the 1700s they repainted but oh man i wish i could have filmed in there or took pictures or anything so this is all inside nijoji castle Today we're in the historic district, Kyomizu Dara. Walking up their shrine, it's about 85 degrees today, nice and toasty. Kyomizu Dara is in the historical Higashiyama district. Uh, a lot of nice places to walk, historical buildings that are preserved. Pretty beautiful, also one of the most popular areas. Now we're trying to go to the uh, overlook section soon. Down, it's probably a phenomenal view. You can see the rest of the city. There was a saying that if you jump from the overlook section and you lived, that some you have good fortune or something like that, which is nuts. I think it's quite the drop. One 
100 feet from the main drag. Got a nice zen garden. Not a soul in sight. Ah, that's my favorite part. And you get to escape the tourists for a little brief moment of time. Soak in nature. Experience the Japanese gardens. But yeah, the main attraction's up there. Gotta hike up that hill. Jump down, get our good luck. Hopefully not break both legs. No, I'm not gonna jump. I'm not. Beautiful. And you got a nice drop at the bottom. So it's our fifth and final day in Kyoto. Just wanted to give a wrap up what we learned about the city. So what we learned is Kyoto is like the Savannah, Georgia, Washington DC of uh, Japan. Uh, you got a lot of museums, historical stuff to do, but there isn't much nightlife. A lot more peaceful, a lot more historical. There's actually stereotypes the Japanese have of regions. And for Kyoto, kind of seen as snobby, very um, traditional, keep to themselves. If you're not from the area, like if you don't have generations in the area, you're considered an outsider. Even if your family moved here, say 300 years ago, it's not long enough. So very traditional. So, but quieter people. Tokyo is a little more cold because it's such a large city. Osaka is supposedly loud and proud, funny. Although this is on like a Japanese scale. So to Americans, maybe loud and proud is more still quiet. What else did I learn about Kyoto? On the escalators, you actually stand on the right side instead of the left side. Whereas in Tokyo and literally everywhere else other than Kyoto and Osaka, you stand on the left side. It used to be the original capital as well. This was actually what I predicted to be my favorite city. Um, just because I love history more than I like nightlife craziness traditionally. I kind of like the smaller cities. I think it's lived up to that. Arashiyama at least was gorgeous. Nara is great. You got to go to Nara. Uh, get those deer. Honestly, one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. But I'm still excited for uh, Hiroshima. I think that's the low key one. It's going to be the best. Um, it's just smaller, it's like 600,000, like much smaller, like DC sized, Savannah sized. I'm honestly learning a lot about Japanese. I've learned, uh, you know, Ohio gosimas, good morning, uh, konnichiwa, like good even, uh, afternoon, uh, konbanwa, like good evening. Uh, a lot of people say arigato gosimas uh, as like a parting thank you. It all, it's like thank you, but it also means like goodbye, thank you, you can say. Uh, arigato gosimas, like, or arigato gosimasta, if it's like ending a conversation. If you're a vegetarian, like my friend Logue is, you're gonna have a lot of issues. Finding vegetarian meals is extremely difficult, vegan even more so. Most of the broth has fish in it, chicken in it. Vegetarian to them is basically no beef. That's some good udon, soba. Um, although the best ramen I had so far was in Tokyo. Only spent one day though, so I can't really speak to it as a whole. Went to the Nishiki market, got some scallops. Oysters were really good. Fried eel was delicious. So all the like the fried stuff in the vendors was cool. But let's talk about the review overall. Like I said, plenty of stuff to do in Kyoto. Five days is the is probably the, the best amount. Four is okay. Three, way too little. Six, you're gonna get a little bored probably. Also a lot of walking. I consider myself in pretty good shape. Do some sports and stuff, but my feet were killing me. Walked like 14 miles a day for three to four days in a row your legs are gonna hurt especially if you have flat foot like me my expectations 10 out of 10 reality nine maybe eight and a half pretty damn awesome though um i don't know what even the scale is i guess a u.s city would be like let's say uh columbus ohio is like a four so it's pretty still pretty damn high on the scale kyoto you gotta go here it's mandatory but I'm super excited for Osaka. I think Osaka is going to be the wild part of the trip. I think we're going to be going to a club or two. Some great food. This is going to be nuts. About to check out our hotel and I'll see you guys in Osaka. Today we're going to hit up Osaka Castle. Uh, one thing we noticed on the metro, they no longer have English after any of the announcements. So we're in, we're in real Japan now. This is not touristy Kyoto or Tokyo. Not as many tourists around here. More authentic. A little rainy. You gotta deal with that sometimes. Can you really call yourself a castle if you don't have an amazing moat? Beautiful moat though. I wonder if they got another moat inside of them like the... Oh yeah, I think there's two moats. Let's go, baby. And there's boats in the moats. Boat moats. This is awesome. 
Yeah, that's pretty big. Boom. So the line moved quicker than expected. We're going in. Inside the castle is a museum. This castle's got eight floors. Made it to the top of the castle. This is the reward. Legend has it that the Empire was forced to stay at this double tree by Hilda over there. He was so upset he decided to build this entire castle and stay in this for the night rather than a three-star hotel. So, can I get some history? Next stop on the list, Umeda Sky. As you can see, it's very rainy today, kind of like Tokyo the first day. We're going to the top of that building behind that other building. Not the best view, I know, but we'll soon be at the very top of that, apparently. It's gonna illuminate the escalator. Uh, it's gonna be cool. I'm gonna walk, it's basically all glass walking up there. Get a nice view. Made it to the sky tower. Funnily enough, one of the main rules, no umbrellas. I guess people lose their umbrellas and they go to the bottom and hit someone or something or other and get impaled by one. Not entirely sure why, but I don't know how many floors are here. 30 something. But look at that view. Look at that view. Too bad it's cloudy. Oh my god, if it was sunny, imagine that view. Ohio go say mas from another cloudy, dreary day in Osaka. Unfortunately, every day has been a bit dreary, but the cheer sells off. We're going to the aquarium. We're going to go see some uh, sea otters, octopus, squid, who knows. So the thing about Japan, their aquariums double as theme parks. Check out this massive Ferris wheel. We are pretty much at the top. You can see all of Osaka. Well, as much as I know about it, at least. Which is a lot of Osaka, so we'll call it all of Osaka. Pretty cool Ferris wheel. Pretty cool Ferris wheel. I haven't been on one this big before. Look at that. Are we at the terrace house? Yeah, and you can see the aquarium. Crazy skyline. Look in the distance. It's gorgeous. Wow. I'm afraid of heights, but this is super cool. We're in downtown Osaka in Dotonbori, famous for its river and advertisements, about as crowded as you can get in Osaka. It's still extremely rainy though, so not as many people. We just went to an awesome store called Don Quixote. It's got like seven floors of awesome stuff. Honestly, one of the coolest uh, shopping floors. Uh, just taking seven sets of elevators in a small place is a lot of fun. Pretty cool shop, a lot of weird stuff, so. Now we're going to see the famous uh, Glico sign. I, look, I don't even know why it's famous, but everyone seems to walk around it and take tons and tons of pictures. You can see tons and tons and tons of advertisements down the entire area. And look at all the people lining up to take pictures there compared to here. No, one, no one's over here. Overall, Osaka, I'll round it up since it was raining the whole time. I give it a, a seven, six and a half if I'm not feeling generous. Uh, only had three days here. Couldn't really do as much because of the rain. It gets a little dreary after a bit. Uh, the food is pretty good. We had the best soba. Nice noodles. It was pretty more expensive than the rest of the places, but it was good. Um, so the food here is probably top tier. And it is pretty cool at nighttime seeing Don Dotenberry, uh, seeing Namba. Looks really lame from the outside, but we had a lot of fun. Um, so onward to Hiroshima, which I think is going to be the sleeper best city we're going to go to. So we'll report back after we get on the Shinkansen. It's about an hour and a half, two hour ride. As usual, we were in a rush to get here. We thought we were late. This ticket machine wasn't working. It was all in Japanese. We didn't know what we were doing. Hello from Hiroshima Station. Made it after a good long ride. Actually got some of my first uh, Kobe Wagyu beef. Wasn't cheap. Probably cheaper than America though. Pretty damn good, pretty damn good. Nice and rare. So that was my first meat meal without Logan, uh, but beautiful sight, sunny day. Hotel's only a few minutes away. 
Alright, I can already tell I'm gonna love Hiroshima. The Yakuza city, according to my Kyoto uh, tour guide. Known for its gangs a little, a little rough around the edges compared to Kyoto. But uh, I'm excited. Hello from sunny Hiroshima. Until about two weeks ago, I called it Hiroshima. But now I know it's Hiroshima. And boy, is it beautiful. And it's nice and small too. Compared to the other cities, Osaka, 2.5 million. Tokyo, 20 something million. Hiroshima, 600,000. Even Kyoto's got like a 1 million, 1.3 million. Small city. About the size of Washington, D.C. 600,000. A bit of tourism, not too much though. Nice, slower pace than the fast cities. Apparently, the Yakuza, the gangsters are here from stereotypes. I don't know if that's actually true. Uh, but we're gonna try some okonomiyaki, uh, what they're famous for around here. Specific type of like dough and bean sprouts and eggs. I'm gonna try that out. Um, right now, just soaking up. Heading to the Peace Park. Or they should have a memorial for the uh, atomic bomb being dropped in World War II. I'm gonna talk too much about that in public, but that's where we're headed. Peace Park. So we're in the Peace Park now, officially. And if you look in the distance, you can see a dilapidated dome. Apparently that is the one remaining structure in the area that's withstood the atomic bomb, so it's very symbolic uh, of Hiroshima's haunted past. Um, just for context, my grandfather served in World War II in the Pacific. He did not participate in the bombing itself, but he participated in the testing at Bikini Atoll, where they tested out the bomb before actually using it. He actually helped out with the measuring of the damage it would do. He'd fly out in the Air Force. He was only about 17 at the time. They drop the nuclear bomb in Bikini Atoll, and he would go out uh, certain miles, markers, and see how much damage it did just to see how big the blast radius was. So he uh, passively participated. Um, so there's a little history of in mine intertwined the different time and place, and uh, some would deem it necessary, some would not. Um, but it's kind of crazy coming full circle. Grandfather, it's not too far from here. He visited afterward with my grandmother. And my great-grandfather actually taught at the University of Hiroshima. So, uh, I think my dad visited too, so four generations of my family. So apparently this is straight up called the Atomic Bomb Dome. I uh, thought they might rename it, but it was built by a Czech architect in the early 1900s and is one of the remaining structures after the bomb was dropped. Uh, one thing that surprised me, there actually was arguments over they should preserve it or knock it down because a lot of people believe that it invoked painful memories of the past while well, always wanted to preserve it. As a, a means to remember what not to do again um, but in the end they ended up preserving it and in uh, 1996 it became a world heritage site so it stands to this day it must have been a damn good Czech architect good morning from Golden Week Festival in Hiroshima pretty lit right now packed everything's blocked off you got fried squid Lemonade, what more can you need? Takoyaki, all the essentials. So there's some benefits coming here, the busiest time of year in Japan. You get all these little carnivals going on, good street food. Everyone's in a good mood. But yeah, so nice and sunny in Hiroshima. Really loving it so far. Last night, me and Logue actually made some new friends. This older Japanese dude bought us some drinks. Uh, helped translate for us. We had no idea what we were doing. We were literally in a place they spoke zero English. So that was a nice experience. It was a good time. I'm loving it so far. Try to get some food. The Golden Week Carnival is getting lit now. It's Golden Week for you. Look at that. That's as far as I can see. <laughs> so one thing you might not know about Japan you're not supposed to walk and eat or walk and drink. It's chain as uh, rude. So you won't see many people walking and eating except for this festival. I've seen some people walking and eating, breaking the rules finally. I got shamed for it earlier, but I got a nice little squid thing. I'm gonna try this out. I've been wanting to try it for a bit. 
I'll stand still because I want to be respectful, I guess. Let's see how this bad boy is. Basically like two squid tentacles. It's pretty doing good. Hmm. Mm, pretty good actually. It's like a sweet soy sauce kind of thing. I guess it's octopus. I don't know if it's I think it's octopus, not squid. Whatever it is, it's great. Mm. Hard to chew. Hard to chew, but worth it. Uh, Seven point eight out of ten. Better than takoyaki I've had. More pure. I don't really like the fried stuff as much, but this is some pretty damn good octopus. Not gonna lie. Seven point eight. It's a nice day, I'll round it up to a nice solid eight. So I finally figured out what's going on around Hiroshima. It's a Hiroshima flower festival. That's why there's hundreds of thousands of people. It's crazy. I don't even know if that's part of Golden Week, but it's a little overwhelming. I've never been to Lollapalooza or Burning Man, but I don't think it's better than this. Easy to get lost. I lost Logan somewhere in the crowds. Probably eaten alive. But a lot of people, really hot out. Food's good though. Couldn't resist and I got some assorted beef tongue. You know, you don't come to Japan to eat KFC. You come to Japan to get some squid, some octopus, some beef tongue. Some Okonomiyaki. That's probably gonna be delicious. I can already smell it. it. Smells delicious. This beef tongue is phenomenal. Nine out of ten. Higher than Takiyaki. Higher than the squid. Okonomiyaki I had last night with Logan. That was probably also a nine. Really good stuff in Hiroshima. Best food I've had so far. There was some good ramen we had in, uh, sorry, soba we had in Osaka, in Doltenburi. It was probably like an 8.5 to 9, but so far Hiroshima, man, it hits the spot. Just arrived at Hiroshima Castle. Beautiful. Not many tourists, too. Another thing about Hiroshima, a little off the beaten path. They don't speak as much English here as compared to other places, less tourists, but... It's more authentic, I find, and you can really enjoy this beautiful weather and serenity. And the moats. We love our moats. The question remains, is there a second moat? smaller than the other castles. Don't think we're gonna find a second moat. I hate to say it, but no moat, no boat. So this dragon shrimp are actually Shachi Hoko. Now I know. Land-headed fish, not a dragon shrimp. Let's see the courtyard. I don't know, small castle, but uh, next up we're gonna check out the Shuiyin Garden. Kind of similar to the other Shui in the garden we saw in Nara. And this one's also extremely beautiful. So, it's gonna be a nice, beautiful, sunny day. So I was wrong about that small, wimpy thing being the castle. The real castle. It's up this way. Can't see it now, but soon it'll all become apparent. The real Hiroshima. Castle. If you look closely, you can see through the trees towering over everything. Oh, yeah. That's the castle we came here to see. Not some wimpy one moat castle. No, 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 no. Now nah, we're talking. Climbing the inside of the castle. Kind of cool. Not as huge. It's Osaka Castle. Still pretty sizable. Good amount of stairs. Seven floors? So that's what the castle looked like after the atomic bomb dropped. So everything has been rebuilt here. So we made it to the top of the castle. 
much smaller than Osaka Castle's top. Oh, there's people too. See, almost empty. You can see a whole bunch of Hiroshima. Huge moat. Actually, there might have been two moats after all. Maybe I lied. Beautiful landscape. You can see the mountains in the distance. Got ourselves a nice little tour guide. The garden. That bridge over there is the one remaining structure after the atomic bomb dropped. Uh, some people took shelter in there, uh, but didn't make it afterward. Look at that view. Shuriken Garden. Completely decimated in the bomb, but grew, grew. Famous ginkgo tree. Um, apparently survived. And they kept the seeds and sent them to people as a blessing. Um, pretty touching stuff, to be honest. Sonshukien Garden. They have islands that are shaped like turtles to show longevity. And there's actual turtles on the turtle island. That's so cool. And they have other ones in the shape of carp as well. Loving it so far. It's a very nice spot for sad history. Everything was burned to the ground in 45. Except for that bridge over there, the Rainbow Bridge. You cross it, it's said to bring you eternal happiness. But during the bomb, some people survived and they went under the bridge to try to live. Um, but the dad for uh, medical aid was able to get there. Pretty sad. Um, but that was the one remaining structure, was that bridge. We're about to cross it to see if it brings us eternal happiness. About to cross the bridge of eternal happiness. Wish me luck. Here we go, it's extremely slippery. Oh man, really steep too. Happiness, here we come. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Compared to the other cities, Hiroshima is a lot more quiet, peaceful. The tour guide was saying, go to the garden to escape the hustle and bustle of Hiroshima, but I'm not really seeing it right now, which is good. I kind of want to change the pace from crazy old Osaka and Golden Week era Kyoto. So just being able to walk along a nice quiet road is, is nice. Hayao gozaimasu from Hiroshima. Today, we're going to Miyajama Island, hop on board a ferry. Apparently this island is full of deer, but unlike Nara, you're not supposed to feed them. It's a nice hike, beautiful shrine that Hiroshima is famous for. It's gonna be a lit day. It looks to be our ferry. It's about 10.35 right now. I think our ferry is at 10.40. Get to the island at God knows what time. Check out some shrines. It's gonna be beautiful. This is, this is insane. This might be one of our favorite days, to be honest. We made it to uh, Miyajima Island. Now we're headed to the famous it's Tsukushima, I believe. Tori Gate. Red Tori Gate in the middle of the water. Kind of famous, I suppose. Oh, look at this view, though. Finally, the like, first beaches we've seen in Japan. People don't really swim around here, though. So we didn't bring any swimsuits. Look at this view. Oh, yeah, there's the Tori Gate right there. Ooh. Made it to the Itsukushima Tori Gate Shrine. Uh, famous uh, during high tide, it actually is almost completely submerged right now. You can see all of it. You actually walk up to it if you don't mind getting your feet wet. Should have brought my sandals, but still pretty massive. So walking in Miyajima Island, you got two choices. You got the easy way, take the rope way up to the top. I don't know, 20 minute ride, easy peasy, or you take the big boy route. You hike up the damn mountain. It takes about an hour and a half. And then you take the rope way down. We're going for the ladder. We're gonna get our exercise today. Work off all that okonomiyaki we had the other day. All the sake. Also it's more, you know, well-earned to reach the top. 
after a long hike. And there's gonna be a lot less tourists, number one. A lot less tourists. Who wants to hike when you can take an easy ropeway? Well, we'll take the ropeway down so we have the view, but oh, I'm excited to get a workout on. Beautiful. Before the hike starts, I got a mini hike up all these stairs. Just go to a temple, bring some gongs, have a good time, pay your respects. Damn, that's loud. Made it to the top. Now we have this gorgeous view. Nice little gong over there to play. Beautiful. Super beautiful. Not too many people either. Imagine being a wimp and taking the cable car up here. It's a harder hike than expected, but you gotta earn your way to the top. Earn your stripes. As I mentioned before, there's deer on this island as well, as in there, but these ones you're not supposed to feed and they're shameless. I opened my bag of chips. This thing walks 50 feet. Just to get a sniff of my chips and they ain't get a single crumb. You hear that deer brain? We're in our stripes. We're climbing to the top. And ain't nothing stopping us except for the venomous snakes. This is harder than Machu Picchu so far. They don't warn you about that, but we're strong. We're strong. Miyajima. I don't even think we're a third of the way there yet. What do you call the parent of a staircase? A stepfather. <laughs> it's been about 50 minutes straight up hiking. I see Mami Sen Observatory. I think we're getting near the top. All right. Apparently, ran into a few four British backpackers. They told us, well, told me, I'm kind of on my own right now. I didn't want to stop. Um, about 15 minutes ago, there's about 25 minutes left, so maybe we've been booking it. Maybe it's closer, but they said it's worth it at the top. The observatory is gorgeous. Well, seem to have made it to the top. Seems like here are all the, the rope wayers. Undeserved. But uh, just a little bit left. Climb up there. We see the observatory. Get a nice view. Totally worth it. Good exercise. I'll show you how out of shape you are. Ooh -wee. Look at that view, and we're not even at the observation deck yet. But look at that other peak over there. Kind of makes me want to climb up there. Can't wait to take the rope way down. Greetings from the top of Mount Misen. We made it. An hour, five minutes later, made it to the top. You can probably go a little higher up these rocks. I don't know if you're supposed to climb them, but that's what we're doing, because I'm a bad boy. Yeah, even better view now. Look at that, beautiful. See the islands in the back. You can even see the observatory. There's an observatory over there. The lame people that took the cable car. Us real ones. Climb to the top. I wonder if we can climb on this rock. I don't know if they allow it. I don't want to get in too much trouble. But yeah, you can see the top over there as well. You have everything. About to take the cable car down. Well deserved. Pretty cool. Ooh. 
So apparently this is a midway station. There's two rope cars down. So it's kind of a cool before and after. We just got back down from the ropeway and now the tide is high and the shrine is up to that height. Another thing we learned is that supposedly there's a church on the other side right through the middle of that Tori gate and it was used as almost to insult uh, the Shintos uh, by showing that hey if you want to go through the Tori gate you're gonna have to take a pic take a look at the church so I don't think it was fondly remembered here, but I learned that. Kind of interesting, kind of spiteful that they built a church right through the middle of those arches on the other side. Uh, but interesting fact nonetheless. But yeah, it's so beautiful now. Ohio Gosemas from the last day in Hiroshima. Another beautiful sunny day like we've grown accustomed to. And honestly, every day has been around 70 degrees to 75 degrees. Beautiful weather, not a cloud in the sky. Nice and peaceful as usual in the city of 600,000. And honestly, I'm gonna really miss this place. Like I mentioned before, this is definitely the most livable city for me. I can see myself living in Hiroshima, not Tokyo, not Osaka, not Kyoto, definitely. But this is a very livable city. The people are friendly and real. The food is phenomenal. The weather is top notch. Uh, and there's stuff to do. Really just natural beauty, a lot of good parks, but not overwhelming with tourists specifically. Um, what did I think of Hiroshima? Top tier food, number one. I'd say the best food we've had so far, udon noodles in Osaka one night, but that was just an outlier. Consistent food here is phenomenal. I had some phenomenal udon last night as well. And then the uh, okonomiyaki as well, two nights ago. I had some pizza the other night as well mix it up a bit but consistently Hiroshima has delivered on the food and the weather now in terms of how I would rank this city uh, it honestly not as high as I originally thought which I had extremely high expectations I'd probably rank it a good 8.5 to 9 a, a, a small little smidge below Kyoto only because Kyoto is more tourist friendly and there's more stuff to do and we were able to spend more time there now, if we had another two days, like we did in Kyoto, we'd probably run out of some stuff to do. Uh, so in terms of visiting, I'd rank Kyoto higher. In terms of living, I would definitely rank Hiroshima higher. Um, but it's an awesome city, and the museum was really touching. I didn't want to go too much into detail on that. It's a very emotional topic. Um, and just seeing the city recover, and the friendliness of the people to Americans. Like we've been interviewed a few times by schoolgirls. Uh, we have a lot of local guides who are like, Americans! Like they're very friendly to Americans here, which is, you know, a little strange considering two generations ago what transpired. Um, but just phenomenal time. Hiking uh, Miyajima, as you can see my shirt. Yesterday was a lot of fun, a lot of good workout, best workout we had this whole trip. Um, just a lot of stuff to do. And then we had the flower festival, the Hiroshima flower festival. Just by chance we got here during it. Tons of stuff going on for that. So that added some stuff to our itinerary. Uh, but yeah, this is Hiroshima. Highly recommend, you gotta come here. You gotta come here. Honestly, I'd rather come here than Osaka. Although Osaka, you know, had bad weather. So maybe I'm heavily biased, but you gotta come here. <laughs> Hiroshima, people, food, weather. Phenomenal baseball games. Unfortunately, we couldn't get a baseball ticket. That would have been nuts. They're the craziest baseball fans here. They're like the Green Bay Packers uh, of baseball here. So people own the team. Anyway, about here at the train station. Ready for a four hour trek back to Tokyo to a nicer hotel, inshallah. And yeah, I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Ohio gozaimasu from New York City. 
How's everyone doing now? We ain't in New York. We're in this dinky little Statue of Liberty in Tokyo on, uh, I don't even know the island. Odaiba, I think. But they got a little mini Statue of Liberty, fun fact. Looks like it's only about 15 feet tall, but hey, we'll take that. But yeah, we're back in Tokyo. Found another interesting statue in the area. I believe that's the model for the 2025 Nissan Altima. We are currently in the biggest park in Tokyo. The Central Park version. The city seems pretty, pretty cool. Have a Tori gate to enter as soon as you get in. If y'all remember, what you gotta do, you gotta bow. And you gotta stick your outward foot. So if you're going on the left side, your left foot needs to be the first step through. So we originally wanted to catch a Hiroshima carp game in Hiroshima, one of the most fervid baseball fan bases in Japan, known for its complete fan ownership of the team but games were sold out for months in advance. Luckily, we scoured the web and were able to find two scalped tickets to a nearby Yokohama Bay Stars game, and we simply couldn't pass that up. So there's one catch to going to the game. I'm a Bay Stars fan, hardcore Bay Stars fan. I'm buying some gear. We're seated in the visitor section, the Tokyo Swallows, those damn birds. And he can't wear, they're very color coordinated, he can't wear base star stuff in the swallow section apparently or you're gonna get ostracized, beaten up by the Yakuza or what have you. So I have to be in enemy territory, sucking up my pride as the base stars beat the ever-living shit out of the swallows. We made it in the stadium, it's already getting lit. Five in, five in, got some good food. So fun. Uh, this is gonna be the best baseball game I've been to, I bet. This is on a Monday night. That's how hardcore they are here. Get it right, America. for the entirety of their line. The Swallows scored a run off four walks, but now we got someone on second after a double. Two to three, close game. Oh, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a, a nail biter, I'm sure of it. Bay Stars have a chance to take the lead. It's currently four to two. Two on, hit a home run, get the lead. This is intense, this game is phenomenal. They're bringing out the Mazda. That means they're bringing out a new pitcher. You don't walk out to the field if you want a new pitcher. You bring out the Mazda Miata and it drops you off at the pitcher's mound. Busiest areas in all Tokyo, uh, right behind uh, Shibuya, I believe. Uh, we're in front of the busiest metro station in the entire world, uh, Shinjuku Station. Uh, two million people apparently go through the station every single day, even gloomy, rainy Tuesdays like this where everything is closed. Fun fact first Tuesday of the month, everything is closed for the government. We tried to go to an observation tower, it was closed. We tried to go to a park, it was closed. Everything's closed. We're heading to the Godzilla head. Um, can't close that. 
Can't close a Godzilla head. Apparently, it goes off once an hour. It roars. So we're here. It's 1.59. Open at 2 o'clock. That big old lizard brain thing is going to spit some fire or do something. When it rains, come inside to the arcade. In the middle of... Uh, Shinjuku is still, this is pretty empty arcade, the one in Osaka was packed, so now I can actually film without interrupting people from their games and stuff. There's no people like going crazy on the drums, you can play your little claw machine. So I played a single game of the claw grab machine, and look what I won. Uh, just got off Shibuya Metro, pretty crowded, we're heading to the big gold crossing. I think this is this in front of us, no idea, I guess we'll find out. Had some fun at the arcade earlier with the seal and whatnot, got ourselves some pastries. Japan is apparently known for having great pastries. Way outperformed expectations. We're at Shibuya River Street now, pretty cool. Just a nice little stream in the middle of a bustling city with some nice stairs, all the restaurant floors, all the overpasses. Got everything you can want. All right, we just got off the uh, train station on the Yamanote line, the green line from Chubuya, 15 stops to Uenu, where our hotel is, but that was honestly the least fun part of our trip so far on that metro. It lived up to what we heard about being crammed on the train. There were no people pushers, but people were pushed to the max like sardines with no consideration for anyone else. People were literally, this lady had her legs pushed up against the wall and was pushing people in, like using her entirety of what she was able to do to push people in. I nearly buckled over a few times. Finishing up the night in Nasakusa. Beautiful view of the bridge and that tower in the distance. Just got finished with a, a chain restaurant meal with tempura and udon. It was really damn good. It was like the uh, Japanese equivalent of Denny's or something. And it was like 10 bucks, a shit ton of food, shrimp, scallops, sweet potato fried. Oh, it was so good. And some miso soup. You gotta, you gotta wash it down. Some miso soup. I love miso soup. But now we're just chilling on the waterfront of Asakusa. And there's this huge carrot or something or other. I don't know. It's a yellow carrot. We're on this cool bridge. It's nice and chill. Just enjoying the sights. <laughs> winding down after that hell of a uh, train ride. <clears throat> Took a lot of energy out of us. But still taking the beautiful Senjuji temple slash shrine. I still haven't figured out shrines and temples. So we're at the top of the Asakusa Tower, which is actually that blue tower from last night. And you can get a pretty pretty good view of all of their world. Kind of like their world Pretty good view. A little cloudy. I mean, it's small, to be honest. I'm sure it has natural clouds in it. 350 meters, whatever the heck that means. Paid another thousand yen to get a more exclusive 100 meters higher up. Little theme or something going on here. You can get your picture with a portrait of an idol. I don't know if I want that, but it's pretty cool though. It's pretty cool. I think the idol's name is Tembo. You weeaboos, maybe Google that and tell me who that is. I don't know what Tembo is. Kiki Tembo, no Sarimbo, Charlie, Brody, Rich, Pit, Perry, Tembo is the only Tembo I know. There you go, Tembo. After all the craziness of downtown Tokyo, you need to have a respite once in a while. Go into nature away from everyone else, like a recluse that we are. Back to the trees with the monkeys, as I would put it. Oh yeah, I could use some matcha tea. Lie down on one of the mats for a bit. Apparently this is the place to be during the autumn time, where all the trees are orange. But honestly, it's just as beautiful in the spring in my opinion. I say that from sheer ignorance because I have no idea what it looks like in the autumn, but it's great now, so. All right, we are now crossing the Masi Bridge of Unhappiness that cancels out all your happiness 
from the Hiroshima Bridge. I enjoyed the happiness gift for the past four or five days. Afternoon from sunny Toyusa. We're at Team Labs, where dreams are made. Dream Labs. We're gonna see the planets, we're gonna see the sun. Mercury, Venus, Mars. I feel like this is Instagram or heaven or something. We're in Akihabara, which is the video game center of Japan in Tokyo. So uh, if you're an anime lover, video game lover, this is the place to be. It's gonna be wild. The coolest floor is the retro floor on the sixth floor. Look at all this old school stuff. Pac-Man, pinball, gun games. You got everything you want. It's Thursday, we're leaving Friday, 5 p.m. Gonna do a little few things in the morning, but the trip is largely over. Three weeks has flown by. But look at all the lotus in the skyline. One last night in Tokyo and Japan and then back to the cold, hard life in North America. But soak it in for now. Walking to Ueno Park one last time. So I just wanted to offer some quick closing thoughts and maybe a few things I would have done differently and advice to people who want to travel to Japan in the future. So overall, Japan really lived up to the hype. I mean, the gardens are so beautiful. The natural beauty in general is astounding. The architecture, uh, the food is astonishingly cheap, good, and consistent. You can go to any convenience store and get a very cheap, affordable, and frankly delicious meal at any 7-Eleven or Lawson, Family Mart, etc. Uh, but that doesn't mean you should go there exclusively to save money and get these cheap meals that are sub one dollar in some instances. Uh, I will say overall, the cultural stereotypes kind of hit the nail on the head. People are very organized and polite as you might expect. Non-confrontational, very image conscious, very about the collective. So maybe some foreigners can get away with doing some stupid and crazy stuff. I don't recommend it. You want to kind of mirror the culture you're getting into. Maybe you can get away with more in Japan than say the Middle East where you might be jailed or something of the sort. Doesn't mean you should be doing stuff. Uh, but just be more image conscious yourself. Try not to make a fool of yourself and represent your foreign country uh, well in Japan. That brings me to my next point. Learn some of the Japanese language, uh, maybe just 10 to 15 phrases, and know how to pronounce them correctly. Like, I was astounded and frankly embarrassed by some of the other foreigners I hung out with uh, from, like, say, Germany, India, uh, everywhere in, in Europe, basically. You were like, Arigato, Arguto. It's like, Arigato. And then, like, they wouldn't say, Go se mas. They'd be like, Go se mas. Or, like, it takes like 10 minutes to go on YouTube and just look up how to pronounce these phrases. It, literally, I spent probably 20 minutes total and I knew way more than any other foreigner and I barely like scratched the surface. So please like, don't look like an idiot and you know, make people around you happy. Like, wow, people actually care about our culture. Now that here's just here to like abuse our really cheap currency and food and stuff and then throw trash at all our sites. No, like show them you're invested in the country. You care about their culture, etc. It's just like 20 minutes. Like, please just do that before you go. Frankly, I was, I was kind of embarrassed and surprised that people are just that ignorant. Uh, little little faith in humanity lost from that. But anyway, overall, uh, I would say I would go back to Japan. I've already have like plans to go back, check out a monastery in the mountains. I want to check out Okinawa, the Monkey Hot Springs. I never got to visit. I really want, that's kind of out of the way, the Monkey Hot Springs, but that looks phenomenal. The Robot Hotel. Wanted to go to the Robot Hotel next time. Uh, oh yeah, and another thing about things I would have done differently, plan and know what time of year you're going. We unfortunately went during Golden Week. We got very lucky, it wasn't as crazy as people said. 
Uh, Golden Week, for y'all that don't know, is like the internal holiday of Japan where everyone has work off and they travel domestically and people are going all over. Kyoto's packed. Uh, everything's nuts. However, we got lucky. I think it's because of the bad economy, frankly. It's sad but true. People are saving money and maybe working during Golden Week or don't have the money to travel domestically. So they're cost saving by not traveling. It was still a little more crowded, but not nearly as bad as YouTube videos and some advice I would have earlier uh, suggested. So know when you're going, uh, plan according to the weather. I wore my shorts basically every single day. I had a pair of jeans, but like I rarely used them. Maybe just in like Osaka when it was raining. So just know the weather you're gonna be getting into and dress accordingly. And also like don't wear weird stuff. Uh, flashing your uh, tattoos and whatnot. Remember, be culturally aware uh, about what Japanese culture and not. Don't wear all this weird stuff. Um, another thing, don't plan too much. We planned probably the perfect amount. I did some research online. I looked at Reddit, I looked at YouTube for some ideas. I wouldn't watch the whole videos. I wouldn't read all of the comments. Leave some surprise in the trip, but you also want to not just be sitting in your hotel wandering aimlessly unless you have like more than like a month to traverse the country. So give yourself some of that surprise. Uh, enjoy the small things as well. My favorite moments of the trip, besides the baseball game, uh, enjoying just the nature, just going out of our way, just walking down the street, no plans at all, just finding a nice garden, feeding the carp there. It's just mind-blowing, checking out a shrine that everyone's forgotten about that's not even on Google Maps. Like, just taking that time and just letting yourself just explore. You don't always have to be connected to the internet. You don't always have to be following a tour guide. Just wander around don't do this all the time but give yourself at least like one out of every three days it's just like a, give yourself wandering hours oh and the best food not even checking google reviews just going on the street finding this place that fits four people you can't read there's no english menu your google translate thing barely works on the menu and just point at stuff like the okonomiyaki we went to a place no one spoke any english at all no one like not a single word it was crazy we were using the google translate it wouldn't work because it was like a weird font so we were just guessing, basically, because some parts of the menu were legible, some parts weren't. We just said Okonomiyaki, and they knew what we were talking about. This guy gave us free drinks. He was like, America. That was one word they do. America. Gave us a business card. That was one of my favorite experiences, just, like, getting lost. We tried. We weren't just like, too. Like, we were trying hard to be understood, and they really appreciated it. That's why we got the free drinks. We're like, this is delicious. Oishi. Yeah, I forget how to pronounce it. It's been a while since I've been there. But just have that in mind. Make sure you have the uh, cultural norms. Don't be afraid to get lost as well. You can't get lost. You can get lost in Japan, but you'll never be in danger. It is one of the most safest countries in the world. Unless you're wandering on the train tracks, you're pretty much safe. Get yourself off Google Maps survey. Just wander around. Don't even think about where you're going. Unless it's someone's yard. You know, don't trespass. But let yourself get lost. Uh, don't kind of embrace it. It's kind of an adrenaline rush sometimes. Like, where am I? Am I still in Tokyo? What, what, what neighborhood am I in? That's, that's a really good feeling. Last piece of advice, or a couple more pieces of advice, pack light, it goes without saying, you, you have to go everywhere on the train, I packed like one carry-on bag, that was it for three weeks, you can make do, there's plenty of laundry machines, you don't need to pack five bags, okay, that's just simple, the smaller, the better, last advice, go to a baseball game, I don't care if you like American baseball, or if you're in European and you don't like baseball at all, it was the best, the people are so happy. They are so happy to be there. They're into the game. They're locked in. They are chanting. They are standing. They are cheering the entirety of the game. They have interactive things during the game. They got disco lights going off, contests, throwing contests. It was so much fun. And the games are all sold out. So buy them in advance as well because they care. They buy them months in advance. And they're still cheap though. I think we got our seats for maybe like less than $20, maybe $12. And it was pretty good seats as you saw in the video, right? It was just hard to find them. <laughs> we couldn't go to a carp game. We couldn't go to the Onigiri Giants game. We like looked around. All we could find was the Bay Stars, but we were very happy it worked out that way. And oh my God, we had such a good time. Uh, yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys were entertained and learned a lot about Japan. I certainly did. I'm hungry to go back there. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, throw them in the comment section. I'm happy to answer them while I still remember them. But uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Bye.